All right, well, I went ahead and wired up this little motor that I showed in my last video, like a true Newman motor. And it was not wired up like a Newman motor in that last video with the reed switch, but this one is. And this is the traditional Newman motor. And there have probably been hundreds, maybe even thousands of these made. Uh, Joseph Newman uh, designed it, and it was... Uh, extremely simple to make and had some very interesting characteristics and I made one long ago and a lot of uh, a lot of people have made them because they are so simple to make it's just a couple of coils of wire that are wired up in a series configuration with a north south rotor and a simple commutator that usually is the shaft of the rotor with a wire wrapped around one end of the shaft and then some sort of a make and break commutator over here and the easiest thing to do was just tape that didn't go all the way around it had an opening in it and made the make and break just at the right point so that the coils pushed on both sides of that magnet and spun it and uh, it uh, runs for a long long time and not a lot of energy and I'm just showing it here with a battery but I'm going to show it today running on a supercapacitor but uh, on this tiny motor to make the commutator with tape or anything uh, was very, very uh, hard. So what I used was correction fluid. This is this white stuff that you use on a typewriter or, or trying to correct something on a piece of paper. And I just coated that little shaft with this stuff and then scraped off just a certain point where I needed the make and break to happen so that when this rotor came around to the right spot, the circuit was completed and it spun. And then over here is this little uh, pickup coil that uh, I'm going to show uh, spinning up this magnet with this uh, magnetic gearing that I've shown in other videos. And I'll show you the voltage that comes off of this and how it's it's somewhat deceiving because it's it's voltage but it's not high amperage. It's about a milliamp is all. But it's enough to light up those LEDs on a blinking scenario and uh, then show voltage here. So what I have here is a 2.7 volt 5 farad supercapacitor. That's going to supply the energy. I've loaded it up with a couple of these AA batteries, about 3 volts. There's probably about 2, 2.5 in it because I don't want to overcharge that. You can see how I've got these coils connected now in series. The last video I was using one of these coils as a straight pickup and driving the whole motor off of one coil with a reed switch that was biased with a magnet so that it would only fire on one one of the poles, not both poles, otherwise it wouldn't run. So that's why the biasing was done on that. This is different. This has a, a make and break going through the shaft and causes this to run. Okay, here we go. There she's running, she's running. And there's this thing on with that ball spinning up with the magnetic gearing that I've shown in several videos now and that's the voltage that this thing is putting out and that's the whole setup right there it's very simple and like I say one of the simplest motors you can make is one of these Newman motors and uh, there's been a lot of controversy about it and uh, um, I think the real value in this motor is the simplicity and the ability of people to make this and then go from there like I did. I went on and studied electronics after first building these very, very simple electric motors. And I have seen the value in this uh, through different eyes. And like I say, this is uh, something I've been studying now for several years with uh, going back and forth between the motors and the different circuits and, and learning electronics. Stop this here. That's off. That's off. Let me start it up again. You'll probably hear that spinning around. And that spinning around. I'm going to give this another jolt with the joy juice here and watch the voltage go up on the uh, pickup coil. Ok, 
Okay, now I put more energy into the capacitor with this. This is running real strong. And there's the voltage on, on this. Now this is somewhat deceiving because these LEDs will clamp the voltage. As soon as those LEDs come on full bright, pretty much you've clamped the voltage at, at that break point where they break over and conduct. So without the LEDs, this would be much, much higher. But anyway, that's the little uh, continuation on this little uh, little motor that uh, I've been fiddling around with. And it can be configured in a number of different ways. This particular way here is the Newman motor. Thanks for watching.